they can tear that apart when they listen to you and they say you can take a home and hey, yeah. just go this way, not that way. But you're right, I mean, dynamic of policing and people and kind of a bottleneck and trample it. Well, maybe it's not Thank you. 
Welcome graduates. The commencement ceremony for the UCLA College of Letters and Science will begin in just a few moments. Graduates and guests, please begin to take your seats. Thank you. Thank you. 
Graduates, please take your seats. Graduates, please take your seat. Welcome to UCLA and our celebration of the College of Letters and Science Class of 2023. <laughs> Graduates, family, and friends, we present the official party. Official party, please be seated. All right, will the official party please be seated? Thank you. It's my honor to welcome you to UCLA's commencement weekend. My name is Jose Rodriguez, and I'm a true Bruin. I graduated from UCLA in uh, biophysics in 2007, and I am now a professor in the Department of Chemistry and Biochemistry. Thank you. And it is my pleasure to serve as the college marshal for the ceremony. Before we begin, the College of Letters and Science at UCLA acknowledges our presence in the traditional, ancestral, and unceded territory of the Gabrielino Tongva people. Graduates of the class of 2023, I celebrate your achievements today alongside our chancellor, our deans of the college, our distinguished alumni, our faculty, and campus leaders. Cherish this moment with your family and friends in Poly Pavilion. You have earned it. We all share their pride and their joy in your accomplishments. You are at the start of a bright and successful future. You have completed one of the most meaningful phases of your life here at UCLA. I'm sure you're all excited about that. You've experienced elation, and I'm sure you've experienced some moments of doubt. Those live moments here will stay with you as you go on to pursue your dreams. I congratulate you for all that you've been through, all the triumph, and encourage you to embrace the thrill of a good challenge as you embark on life's adventures. Those who are here with you today, those who came before you, and those who remain here on campus will forever be your Bruin family, as they have been to me. 
In the years ahead, you might feel challenges, but feel comforted by the fact that you were and forever will be a Bruin, and that all of us will be cheering you on. In those moments of doubt, consider this advice. You have been equipped to be an agent of change, of resilience, and of responsibility. You carry the torch of knowledge with you and can proudly stand against the dark and the, uh, proclaim, let there be light. When I look out now, I see an impressive and mighty group, and everyone who has come together for the ceremony today has helped you reach this moment, follow their lead, and enrich their lives. The lives of your family, your friends, your colleagues, uh, whenever you can and wherever you can. Never forget how valuable your gifts and your contributions are towards the success of everyone around you. Our future is now with all of you. Singing today the national anthem is James Ryan Viason Flores. James is graduating with a degree in psychology. For those who are able, please rise for the singing of the national anthem and welcome James. stripes and bright stars through the perilous fight or the ramparts we watched were so gallantly streaming and the rockets regular the bombs bursting that our flag was still there. Oh, say does that star-spangled banner yet wave o'er the land of the free? And the Thank you, James. You all may be seated. Now I am pleased to introduce the Senior Dean of the College and Dean of Physical Sciences, Miguel Garcia Garibay. Hello, graduates. Isn't this a beautiful evening? Some great time to celebrate. On behalf of the deans, faculty, and honored guests who join, join me on this stage, I welcome you and your family to the commencement ceremony for the College of Letters and Science. I would also like to thank Professor Rodriguez, our college marshal, for greeting us uh, this evening. Graduates, it is a day to acknowledge your achievements and to celebrate the culmination of your undergraduate studies you have met the highest challenge of education. You have been partners with faculty in our quest to learn and discover. You will be the next generation of leaders in the fields that you pursue. Class of 2023, your academic journey has led you here to this historic moment in time, which will never come again. Because today, together, we look forward to a bright future. Graduates, join us, joining us here today are many special people who stood by you through your years at UCLA. 
your family and friends. I would like to ask the parents, the partners, the friends, and the family members of our graduates to please stand, if you're able. <laughs> graduates, please join me and acknowledge your guests. Thank you. Now, now I am pleased to welcome the Chancellor of UCLA. <laughs> in, his, in his 16 years as Chief Ex Executive of the campus, he has worked to strengthen the university's academic excellence, build our campus diversity, and inspire a new level of civic engagement within the UCLA family. Please welcome the Chancellor of UCLA, Jean Block. Graduates, families, friends, and our distinguished speaker, welcome to UCLA, the nation's number one public university. So as, as UCLA's chancellor, it's my great honor to preside, to preside over this celebration. For today, we pay tribute to the exceptional, the sensational, the unshakable UCLA class of 2023. Incredible. And although it's true that this day clearly belongs to you, as was mentioned, no one reaches this day without a lot of support. So another hand, actually, for all the folks that helped you along the way. So, so today's event, and I think you're all aware of this, is often described with two different words. One, graduation, and second, commencement. And very often now we talk about commencement, but graduation or commencement, both of those terms are used. And the two words really show us the dual meaning or the dual nature of this, of this celebration. The first term, graduation, frames the ceremony as a capstone of culminating experience. It asks us to look back in time and reflect upon where you've been during, and the course of your journey. So it's a backward looking, uh, clearly, activity. Graduates, you might think back to the joyous moments when you first received your offer admission, admission to UCLA, which is becoming an increasingly rare event, unfortunately. And uh, I'm sure that you were excited. Or to the first tentative steps on campus, perhaps the first time you met your new roommates, a lot of goodwill, maybe a bit of awkwardness. Or you might think of an English class that you just took on a whim that sparked a, lover, a love of uh, modernist hit poetry or a time you took a robotics club you got involved in and were inspired to dive deeply into kinetics and kinematics. You know, the extraordinary variety of opportunities you have at UCLA to engage it really, is, uh, really is one of the great strengths of this institution. Perhaps most importantly, you might recall the way a late night discussion with a friend transformed the way you look at an issue. And of course, that's the power of this institution, the diversity of views can really shape the, your viewpoint in, in important ways. Or perhaps uh, in a less, uh, more, more, more fun way, you uh, can remember the eight clap actually here in Pauley Pavilion cheering, cheering for a Bruins game. Many people remember that, certainly. Or you might think of a very special evening walking through the sculpture garden, which is simply stunning, you know, on a warm evening, just when the jacarandas in it bloom, and it just leaves a, an impression, a visual impression of UCLA really forever. So I'm sure all of you had these magical moments at UCLA. All the alumni I talked to can always tell you three or four just vivid images they remember of this campus. But you've been through a lot more than magical moments. And I recognize that your UCLA experience was marked by much more. You saw the world wrenched apart by COVID pandemic that took hold really during your time here. You may have felt the whiplash of moving back with your parents, turning a kitchen table into a classroom taking a new role, some of you as caregivers, uh, grappling with the fear of isolation, feelings of isolation and fear. 
this was a challenging time for everybody. I think for young people, it was particularly hard. So we recognize that. But beyond the pandemic, your experience of UCLA was set against the backdrop of other historic events that were also deeply, deeply troubling. We had the polarizing US presidential election, a brazen siege of the Capitol building, a powerful women's rights movement in Iran, and troubling invasion of Ukraine. These are really movements and activities that affect, obviously, the entire, the entire world. And in the wake of George Floyd's killing in Minneapolis, you witnessed the upswell of attention to longstanding issues of racial injustice. And especially here in California, you felt the effects of climate disasters like wildfires and excessive heat. And there really is no relief in sight right now for these. These are really challenging events. You also saw pronounced economic growth during your time here, and also a significant uh, economic contraction, which we're experiencing now. So you've seen the ups and the downs of the economy, as well as all these other challenges and, and events. And you've witnessed the emergence of chat GPT. And, but should not clap. I don't think you should clap on this one. <laughs> don't clap. And what I think what you're really going to be faced with is the, the massive social reckoning with the power of AI technology. It's really going to be your generation that's, going to face, that's going, really going to face the good and the bad of artificial intelligence. So it's something, something ahead of you to, to deal with. So all of these experiences, the experiences shaped your time at UCLA, affecting the decisions you made with regard to coursework, pastimes, and your burgeoning career. Certainly, certainly all that's true. And ultimately, these experiences also really shaped you. Really, these are really strong forces. They etched on you resilience and adaptability. They gave you a greater respect for science. Certainly all of us that went through COVID learned a lot more science during that time. We also learned a lot more about truth and the recognition of the dangers of misinformation. So I think this was just a classic study of the danger of misinformation when you're dealing with something as serious as a pandemic. They also reinforced the need to fight for this planet's future and ask you to approach new technology with thoughtfulness and care. So even as all this stirred up anguish, uh, I think it endowed you with compassion and empathy, as well as a commitment to justice for, and the greater good. So I mentioned that today's event goes by the name commencement, as well as the name graduation. And while graduation, as I said, asks us to look back where you've been, commencement invites us to look forward where you're all going. So members of the class of 2023, the world is certainly full of intractable problems, problems that are deeply, deeply rooted, that are multidimensional and span national borders, true challenges. But crises are also moments of immense possibility when traditional order can be shifted and new thinking applied to old problems. So this very volatile world we're living in now actually gives you opportunities with the skills you've gained here at UCLA and, your, and all of your, your capabilities. You really have a chance to change the world in ways that perhaps other generations couldn't. I mean, there's just enormous power in your hands to make a difference. As you prepare to leave UCLA, I hope that you'll retain the ties you, 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 that bind you here to this institution and to this community. So, you will leave a group of thousands of students to become an alumni, alumni, with, alumna with approximately 500,000 alumni. So you're going, to be reaching, you're going to be reaching a much larger group in the future, which wherever you live will be helpful to you. And I hope you stay deeply involved with UCLA through alumni activities, which we're trying to extend now throughout the world and to provide you with opportunities, educational opportunities for the rest of your life. So I hope you stay connected to us. I also invite you to view this historic era in which we live as a chance to rebuild anew. You really, as I said, have the opportunity to do this. Bruins are nothing if not marked by optimism. You are an optimistic group, and that's so important for the future. And it's in our DNA to look at the world as one that's ripe for constant reshaping. So again, let me offer you my deepest gratitude and my best wishes. You know, I hope your edu the education you've received here will serve you well, and you will use it not just to benefit yourselves, but to benefit all of society. And I'm convinced you'll do that. I've seen the commitment of students. I've seen your volunteer efforts, your concern for one another, your concern for society. I have great confidence that you're all going to make a difference. 
So congratulations to the UCLA class of 2023. I wish you much success, the best of luck. And with that, I offer one last Go Bruins. Thank you. Thank you, Chancellor Block. My name is Adriana Galvan, Dean of Undergraduate Education. My fellow deans and I are honored to acknowledge the students who graduate today with very special academic achievements. I would like to recognize the students who are graduating with one of the highest academic awards the College of Letters and Science can give to an undergraduate, the designation of college honors. The extraordinary students who are graduating with college honors have completed outstanding work in their major and also a special set of rigorous courses. Of the thousands of students who are graduating from UCLA this year, nearly 500 are receiving college honors. Will the students who are graduating today with college honors please stand? Thank you, please be seated. Dean Johnson will recognize your service in the community. Graduates, my name is Tracy Johnson and I'm the Dean of Life Sciences. I am pleased to recognize our many students who are involved in projects in the community. They accomplish this work through campus programs that bring together civic involvement with their academic courses. Would all of the graduating seniors who serve in the community Please stand. Thank you. Dean Valenzuela will recognize the Chancellor's Service Award recipients. Graduates, I proudly serve as Interim Dean of Social Sciences and my name is Abel Valenzuela. I am privileged to acknowledge the recipients of the 2023 Chancellor's Service Award. The Chancellor's Service Award is presented to students whose college careers have been distinguished by dedication to UCLA and the broader community. These students, 99 of them this year, have earned this distinction through a sustained record of outstanding leadership and service. Will the students who have been honored as recipients of the Chancellor's Service Award please stand so that we can recognize your superb commitment? There we go. Thank you. Please be seated. Dean Stern will recognize those who have earned Latin honors. Graduates, I am Alexandra Ministern, Dean of Humanities. I would like to present our students who are receiving Latin honors, which is recognition for high academic achievement. There are three levels of Latin honors. First, I would like to acknowledge our students who have received cum laude honors. Please stand if you are able to be recognized. Thank you, please be seated. Next, I would like to honor our students who are graduating magna cum laude. Please stand if you are able to be recognized. Thank you, please be seated. Finally, let us honor the students who are graduating with the highest Latin honors, summa cum laude. Please stand if you are able to be recognized. Congratulations on these very impressive academic achievements. Dean Garcia Garabe will recognize your effort in research. Graduates, I would like to recognize students who have, who have participated in research while at UCLA. 
As you know, UCLA is one of the world's great research universities. More than half of our students enhance their academic careers by working alongside faculty on projects, or writing an honors thesis, or participating in research classes. These students perform original work and advance the frontiers of knowledge. With all the graduating seniors who participated in research, please stand if you're able so that we can recognize your achievements. Congratulations. Please be seated. Dean Galvan. Thank you, Dean Garcia Garibay. Graduates, you've excelled in everything you've put your mind to, from research to community service, from academic success to personal enrichment. You've spent your years at UCLA becoming well-rounded and ready to begin a new chapter. Your student speakers for this evening embody many of your own successes. Anvi Brambat is from Milpitas, California, and is graduating today Phi Beta Kappa, cum laude, and with college honors. She is receiving a Bachelor of Science degree in Molecular Cell and Developmental Biology and a Bachelor of Arts degree in Communication and a minor in Disability Studies. Anvi has served as the co-chief of Students for Community Outreach, Promotion, and Education, also known as SCOPE, overseeing five unique programs serving the Los Angeles community by minimizing disparities in health care and education. She has served as a patient health advocate at UCLA Health to connect patients with resources in their communities to improve their overall health and well-being. Please welcome Anvi. I would first like to welcome renowned Chancellor Block, honored guests, our incredible faculty and staff, our friends, families, and loved ones, and of course, the inspiring class of 2023. I am honored to be here and to have this opportunity to address you all. First and foremost, congratulations to the class of 2023. The, pa the past few years have been full of uncertainty. We faced the COVID-19 pandemic in the early phases of our college careers, and I've had to navigate both Zoom University and transitioning back in person. One thing the pandemic taught us, however, is the importance of community, of human connection and support. And I feel so privileged to have had the UCLA community these past four years. I am a UCLA campus tour guide, and at the end of every tour, I tell my guests why I chose UCLA. UCLA was the first campus I ever toured as a junior in high school, and it could not have been a more perfect introduction to higher education. UCLA is the number one public university in the nation, and we are leading in our work in academics, research, and public service. One of the most unique things about UCLA I observed, however, is the positive, supportive culture the people here cultivated. As a prospective student, I found the students here to be very friendly and welcoming. However, it was only when I began my undergraduate journey here that I realized truly how special the Bruin community is. During my first year at UCLA, I felt like a very small fish in a very big pond. Having come from a pretty small hometown, I felt overwhelmed thinking about how to navigate college life. While I was excited to start a new chapter in my life, and had so many ideas about what I wanted to do during my time at UCLA, I had no idea how I was going to put those ideas into action. I came into UCLA as a molecular cell and developmental biology major, but also knew I was interested in studying communication. However, I wasn't sure if there would be an avenue to combine those two areas of study. I also knew I wanted to explore the world of research, but had no idea where to start. But the people here helped me achieve more than I knew was possible. To my departmental advisors and counselors, thank you for supporting me in my journey pursuing an interdisciplinary education in two very distinct fields, and for signing countless blue petitions to make that happen. To my PIs and lab mentors, thank you for introducing me to the world of research, 
for giving me the space to, give, to build something of my own and for your patience. To my coworkers, my friends who have become my family, and my peers, thank you for the laughs, your unwavering support, but most importantly, for inspiring me with all that you do. To God and my gurus, Pramukhsami and Madhsami Maharaj, thank you for your unwavering support and for getting me to where I am today. And of course, thank you to my mom, my dad, and my brother. You three have been there for me through it all, and I would not be standing on this stage without your unconditional love and support. To this day, I am so grateful my UCLA campus tour guides introduced me to the incredible community we have here on campus. In fact, they're the reason I became a tour guide myself, to show others that having such a support system can allow you to achieve even what you think is impossible. But this is just my story. What I love about our Bruin community is that every single one of us has our own unique passions and interests, and we have been able to accomplish so much with them. From activism on campus, to dedicating our time serving the local Los Angeles community and beyond, we have already begun creating change. And I cannot wait to see what we are able to accomplish in the future. Congratulations to the class of 2023. As a wise L. Woods once said, we did it. Thank you, Anvi. Our next student speaker, Karen Dutko, was born in Ukraine, and at a young age, she and her family immigrated to America in search of an environment that, that would allow her to thrive. She graduates today with a Bachelor of Science degree in environmental science and minors in geospatial information systems and technologies and environmental systems and society. Karen received the Undergraduate Research Fellows Program and Undergraduate Research Scholars Program awards for two consecutive years as a result of her research utilizing remote sensing to analyze deforestation, deforestation patterns in the Congo Basin. Please welcome Karen. I'd like to welcome our Chancellor, Jean Block, our faculty who taught us throughout this unforgettable journey, our honored guests, beloved family and friends, and most importantly, our brilliant Bruins. Congratulations, class of 2023. Today marks a special moment in the history of our lives as we gather here with our loved ones and celebrate our achievements. Despite the highs and the lows, the endless late nights, and the nerves that came with every exam, the untimely passing of Powell Cat, the pain that affected all of us with the COVID pandemic, and the trials and tribulations of young adulthood, you made it to the end and earned a degree from the number one public university in the nation. one Bruin to another, I am proud of you. Earning a degree comes with hundreds of challenges, but when the odds are against you, it is crucial to believe in yourself. My journey was just as difficult as yours. In my case, I was born with a genetic disorder called spinal muscular atrophy, which causes progressive muscle weakness and results in complete paralysis over time. I was forced to adapt to my constantly changing circumstances throughout my life. But I realized that I should never hold back on my ambitions due to my physical limitations. UCLA made me discover my genuine love and passion for research, directing me towards a lab led by powerful women of different backgrounds who all had immense talent and skill. I finally felt validated as a queer, disabled, woman in STEM because I personally witnessed <laughs> because I personally witnessed how difficult it is to be shut down by privileged white men who previously dominated the field of science. <laughs> you 
UCLA is an institution that believes in students regardless of circumstances, and every day we as a collective make the world a better place. My contribution came as president of Sigma Delta Sigma, where I advocated for sisters who face discrimination every day because I believe in strength through diversity and sisterhood. When I tell people about UCLA, I describe it as this magical place where I discovered my purpose, carved my career path, formed lifelong friendships, fell in love, and fostered my success as an adult. As a person with a fairly obvious physical disability, I didn't believe I would ever accomplish any of those things. But UCLA served as a beacon of opportunity, welcoming me with open arms and celebrating my identity. I am proud to say my UCLA journey doesn't end here, as I'll be continuing my graduate education at the only place I call home this upcoming fall. Today, I shared my story with all of you, but I encourage you to share your story with the world. There's a lot of eagerness and hope that comes with graduation, but I know that there's also plenty of confusion, fear, and uncertainty. I know the real world can be daunting, but it's exhilarating to start a new chapter in your life where you get to discover the person you were meant to become. Each and every one of you in this room has the capacity to change the world if you set your mind to it. You have the heart and the brain you require. Now all you need is a little bit of confidence to make it happen. Wherever you may be headed, just remember, you are a Bruin for life. So before I leave, on the count of three, I ask all of you to stand if you're able and say with me, I am proud to be a Bruin. Okay? One, two, three. Get up, y'all. <laughs> I am proud to be a Bruin. Thank you, Karen. Remarkable students. That's what makes UCLA. So now, it's my great pleasure to introduce today's distinguished speaker, the celebrated actor, writer, director, comedian, and UCLA alumnus, Randall Park. A Los Angeles native, born to Korean immigrant parents, Randall Park grew up with an interest in acting that deepened significantly when he attended UCLA in the mid-1990s. During his time on campus, he co-founded LAPU, the Coyote That Cares Theater Company, an Asian-American theater organization that has endured for several decades and remains active today. Remarkable. He earned his bachelor's degree in English with a minor in Asian-American studies in 1997. After several years on the L.A. Uh, theater film and comedy circuit, Park achieved breakthrough success with acting roles on the sitcom The Office, 2009, and the film The Interview in 2013. Since then, he's become one of, he's become one of the most in-demand actors in Hollywood, praised for his versatile skill set and nuanced performances bridging comedy and drama. Notably, he played an endearing patriarch in the television show Fresh Off the Boat, which aired from 2015 to 2020. He's become a mainstay of the Marvel and DC Cinematic Universes with the roles in the Ant-Man and the Wasp and Aquaman franchises, as well as in the series WandaVision. He's also, he also co-wrote and starred in the 2019 romantic comedy film, Always Be My Maybe. For which he received critical acclaim for his fresh take on the genre and its Asian American representation. His feature length directional debut, the film Shortcomings, competed this year in this year's Sundance Film Festival and comes out in theaters on August 4th. There you go, there's your hint, there's your hint. <laughs> While Park's success in entertainment is well known, I also want to note that he is a committed advocate for people with developmental disabilities. 
Park is helping to make accommodations for sensory needs available for this year's commencement exercises through an organization called Culture City, where both he and his wife serve on as the board of directors. Park has continued to stay deeply engaged with UCLA since his own graduation, serving as an alumni volunteer at the UCLA Uni Camp, delivering the keynote address at the 2017 English Department commencement, and even earning the Alumni Association 2016 Edward A. Dixon Alumnus of the Year Award. So his uh, prestigious awards, recognition, and engagement with the campus since graduation. Great model, folks. Great model to stay engaged, right? <laughs> I also want to acknowledge uh, that his mother worked as an accountant here on campus for f a full three decades. So this is really a Bruin family. A captivating and boundary-breaking artist with strong dedication to public service, Park is an exemplar of UCLA's excellence and UCLA's values. Please join me in welcoming today distinguished speaker, Randall Park. Oh my God, thank you so much. You know, I was most excited for the 7 p.m. ceremony because I knew that by 7 p.m. I'd be slightly drunk, <laughs> which I am, thanks to the deans. Anyway, I just want to start off by saying congratulations to the UCLA graduating class of 2023. <laughs> Chancellor Block, deans, faculty, family, friends, and graduates. It is a lifelong dream and a profound honor for you to have me here today. <laughs> My name is Randall Park. As was mentioned in the introduction, I am a very successful actor. I am very talented, intelligent, charming, and humble. I am handsome, too. In fact, I'm a bit of a sex symbol. <laughs> now, I say this not to brag to you so much as to brag to myself. Because a few months back, when Dean Galvan reached out and invited me to be this year's distinguished speaker, my first thought was, why me? There are far more distinguished people in this world, more famous, more successful, more desirable people. So I had to remind myself of my own greatness. I needed to remember that Randall Park is an international sex symbol. Yes, I spoke in the third person, and yes, I threw in the word international. As we must do every now and again, I had to hype myself up. And if there was any self-doubt, I would use that as motivation to write the best damn commencement speech in the history of UCLA. Yes, I was inspired, so I began to write, and at lightning speed, with the help of ChatGPT, I finished my speech, it took me about seven seconds, and here we are. Now, graduates, before I begin, I want you all to give a round of applause once again for your family and friends here today and throughout your life who helped you get to this mountaintop. I'd like to uh, take a moment to acknowledge my own family who helped me get to this day. My uh, beautiful wife of 13 years, my best friend in the world, Jay. She stood by my side when I was broke and struggling. I wouldn't be here without you, and I love you with all of my heart. And to Caitlin, my beautiful mistress of two years, I asked you not to come here, but you did, so what could I do about that? To my incredible 11-year-old daughter, Ruby, my favorite human being in the world, her hobbies include painting, making slime, and attempted arson. I would also like to uh, acknowledge my amazing mom and dad who are no longer with us. Uh, not because they passed away, but because they were here earlier, got bored, and left. To, uh, to all my family and friends here today, I just want to say I love you and I appreciate you. 
and thank you for being here. Uh, yes. But this is, this is to all you graduates here today. Uh, just please know that from here on out, we are family. We are a Bruin family. And throughout this life, if you ever find yourself in a bind, I am extending an open invitation for you to DM me directly on social media, and I will do whatever I can to help you out. Now, I say this, I say this because Bruin bonds are strong, and also because I am not on social media. <laughs> Speaking of disappointment, this is the subject I want to talk to you about today. Now, disappointment is going to be a recurring character in your life moving forward. You will be disappointed. You will disappoint others. You will disappoint yourself. That's right. You know this. Tonight, many of you will be very drunk. Yeah, I could hear some of you already drunk. And a good percentage of you will commit a crime. Uh, my guess is about half of you. You will end up in jail desperately trying to DM me on social media to bail you out. One of your best days will turn into one of your worst, and you will momentarily lose sight of the fact that there is a tomorrow. But you're already familiar with this process. Your time at UCLA has been fraught with disappointment. You've endured the catastrophe of a worldwide pandemic. You made it through a, a period of our history that continues to be rife with uh, division, flagrant mendacity, and even war. And you mourned. In fact, we all mourned. As was mentioned, none of us will ever get over the untimely, untimely death of Powell Cat, our feline friend, a true source of campus joy. Yes, you've been through a lot. Yeah. You've been through a lot, and yet somehow you made it here today. Here's a quote. The most exquisite rose in a garden started with but two things, a single seed and a big old pile of stinky cow shit. That's from Mother Teresa. This is according to ChatGPT. So here's the thing about disappointment. You may not realize it at the time, but after the sting of every setback, the heartache of every defeat, you will be left with two options, to hold on to it and become bitter, or to grow from it and become better, stronger, smarter, more compassionate, more inspired. And sometimes, just on the other side of disappointment, you'll find a great blessing. Now, I'm going to tell you three stories from my life on this topic. Here's the first one. So I decided to pursue a professional acting career in my later 20s. I had been putting it off throughout my adult life because, frankly, I was scared of failure. But I finally gave in to my passion and for well over that first decade, all I did was fail. Into my 30s, I was still living with my parents, broke, disillusioned, and at times deeply depressed. My love life was in shambles. For some reason, women did not want to make out with a 32-year-old unemployed actor whose father just farted in the next room. <laughs> but then, in 2013, I booked my first lead role in a major studio motion picture, and that movie was called The Interview, and the role was that of North Korean dictator Kim Jong-un. Now, at the time, I wasn't sure if it was the best idea to play a real-life dictator. But then I thought about it, and I said to myself, what's the worst that could happen? <laughs> Besides, the script was incisive and funny, and for me, it was an opportunity to finally show people what I could do. I was ready, and all I needed was a shot. After production wrapped, I was on a high, mostly from marijuana, but also emotionally. Before the movie was even released, word of my performance began to spread throughout the industry. Even the head of the studio pulled me aside and said, that performance is going to change your life. I was feeling more confident than ever. I started working more, and for the first time in my career, I got a straight offer for a role on a TV pilot that I never would have gotten had it not been for my rising stock in the industry. Then, just before the movie's release, as some of you may remember, all hell broke loose. North Korea made terrorist threats against any theater that would premiere the interview. Sony Studios' internal infrastructure got hacked, 
and the entire entertainment industry was rocked to its core. The 24-hour news cycle speculated on possible nuclear retaliation. In fear of our lives, the studio set up around-the-clock security guards in front of our tiny Valley Village home. It was insanity. And soon enough, every major cinema chain pulled the interview from their theaters. My one shot at big-time success was foiled by the real-life Kim Jong-un. <laughs> now, while the movie did end up coming out online and in a few independent theaters, the whole thing was overshadowed by the controversy surrounding it. It sucked, I felt terrible, but eventually I got up, dusted myself off, and I moved forward. Then, the completely unexpected happened. To my surprise, that little TV pilot I got got picked up to series. Fresh Off the Boat became the first Asian family on network television in over 20 years. It became a big hit for ABC and would go on for six amazing seasons. And that show not only changed my life, but I like to think that it helped change the industry, ushering us into this great renaissance of Asian American stories being told today. And for me, it never would have happened without the interview. All right, here's another story. So I've been lucky enough to be in the Marvel Universe where I play a character named Agent Jimmy Woo. Thank you. In 2021, Jimmy Woo was a part of the uh, first Marvel Studio series on Disney Plus called WandaVision. And the show was wildly creative, immensely popular, and my character was so beloved that just last year, Marvel Legends released the Jimmy Woo action figure in my likeness. I was thrilled. I always wondered what it would be like to have my own action figure, and somehow this whimsical fancy had come to fruition. Okay, but then just a few weeks ago, and this is a true story, I was at a Best Buy, and I wandered into an aisle of wall-to-wall -wall Jimmy Woo action figures on clearance sale. Nothing humbles you like seeing an endless legion of your own face staring right back at you from a bargain bin. <laughs> Needless to say, I got the hell out of that Best Buy. That's the end of that story. So, not all of these I'm happy. All right, here's my final story. In 2008, I met the most beautiful woman I had ever seen. Her name was Jay. I asked her out on a date, and for some reason, she said yes. Less than a year later, I asked Jay to marry me. And again, for some reason, she said yes. We got married, and then in 2011, we found out that we were going to have a baby. Initially, it was a shock for me. I had completely forgotten that such a thing could happen from unprotected sex. <laughs> but it happened. And after briefly considering making a run for it, I started to get really excited. I was going to be a dad. All I could ask for was a healthy baby, but deep down my dream was for us to have a girl. I knew in my heart that I would make an amazing girl dad and a not so good boy dad. If you see me throw a football, you will understand what I'm talking about. Then on May 17th of 2012, my wish came true when a, be when a beautiful, healthy baby girl was born. We named her Ruby Louise Park. Seeing Ruby coming out of her mother might have been the most horrific thing I had ever seen. I screamed at the top of my lungs, put it back in. But thankfully, the doctor didn't listen. Because when I held that tiny girl in my arms, I fell in love. Our family was now three. Our new chapter had begun. In the years that followed, Ruby was initially reaching all of her developmental milestones. But then we noticed her beginning to fall behind. Small patterns of behavior that were atypical of most children her age began to emerge. She was easily distracted and, and extremely sensitive to certain sounds and environments. And at school, she seemed to have no interest in making friends. While other kids were beginning to delight in conversation, Ruby's verbal communication was limited to one or two words at a time. Something was off. We took Ruby to a doctor who sent us to a developmental pediatrician. And after months of testing and retesting, we were given the news. Ruby is on the autism spectrum. I was devastated. My first reaction was, how do we fix this? What can we do to make her better, to get her ready for this complex and oftentimes cruel world? For me, it was also a crisis of identity. I saw myself as a girl dad, but not the father of a child with a neurodevelopmental disorder. 
I became obsessed with researching all the different therapies and diets and medications and, and emerging technologies, diving headfirst into a vortex of information and misinformation and wild conjecture and toxic debate. I was at my wit's end with no idea of what our future would look like. Today, Ruby is 11 years old. She is on the autism spectrum, and I wouldn't change a thing about her. She is beautiful and strong like her mom, silly and gassy like her dad. She's creative, she's hilarious, and she loves to laugh. She is our pride and joy. Ruby has taught me so much about life, about compassion, about how deep and meaningful communication isn't just about the words we say, it's also about, the, uh, about energy and action and time and attention and the subtle, silent, everyday expressions of an unconditional love. I used to think that she needed to be fixed in order to fit into this messed up world. But now I see it differently. It's the world that needs to do better, be kinder, be more inclusive. And Ruby inspires me every day to do my part. And looking out at you shining graduates here today, I am confident that she and this world are going to be just fine. All right, now it's the uh, obligatory section where I give you some life advice. Here we go. Now, if you're dating someone and you know it's not going to work, end the relationship, okay? Don't, don't string them along. Don't ghost them. Certainly don't zombie them. That's when you ghost them and then months later you come back from the dead. And do not by any means werewolf them. That's when you show up one random night with longer hair, swearing that you've changed. And then when you get rejected, you howl at the moon and take a dump on their lawn. Do not do that. <laughs> Here's another one. If you're doing laundry in your apartment complex, time it out so that you can remove the clothes as soon as it's done. As opposed to leaving it sitting in the machine all day for the next person to wonder if it's okay to touch your nasty, ratty underwear. If you find yourself anonymously trolling an innocent person on the internet, stop and ask yourself, why am I so miserable? And what actionable steps can I take to fix it? Now, if you've retrofitted your car or motorcycle with one of those super loud exhaust pipes, Again, ask yourself, why am I so miserable? <laughs> and what actionable steps can I take to fix it? There are children like my daughter who are very sensitive to loud noises. Also, we aren't turning to look at you because we think you're cool. We look because we're startled and because we think you're being ridiculous. I guess all of this is to say, let's just try to be kinder and more considerate of one another. It's a tough thing to be in this broken world and in this internet age where the algorithm was seemingly designed to keep us on edge. But I believe that treating others with kindness, especially when there's nothing personal to gain from it, is a small and simple and effective way of making this world a better place. But it all starts with being kind to yourself, taking care of your mental, emotional, and physical health, cultivating your joy, and protecting your sense of humor at all costs. And during any moments of self-doubt, take personal stock. Remind yourself that you are a UCLA Bruin. This school is like impossible to get into and you graduated from it. You are already incredibly accomplished. You are intelligent, talented, charming, and humble. You are an international sex symbol. <laughs> All right, here's one last story before I go. Now, this story takes place in the year 2074. I'm 100 years old, and I'm on my deathbed. I'm in my bedroom, surrounded by my loved ones, my wife, Jay, who is just as beautiful as the day we met. My daughter, Ruby, who is now the first AAPI neurodiverse female president of the United States. And all of you, my Bruin family, are there with me. I have a very big bedroom. 
I've lived a great life, you know. I've achieved many accolades, won many awards. I finally learned how to throw a football. And I'm happy to report that the original Jimmy Woo action figure recently sold at auction for a record-breaking $17 billion. But I'm not thinking of any of my achievements, nor am I dwelling on any of my disappointments. I am simply at peace, for I know what it's like to love and to be loved. I see a blinding light, and I transition to the other side, where I'm greeted by all of my family and friends who, I, who have passed. And I see Mother Teresa. And oh my god, there's Powell Cat. I'm so happy to be with them all, but I do have one question. Why is it so hot in here? <laughs> I'll tell you why, says Powell Cat. Oh my god, you could talk. <laughs> yes, in the afterlife, cats can talk. Anyway, Randall, it's hot because you're in hell. <laughs> but I'm confused. I mean, I know I'm garbage, but Mother Teresa, shouldn't you be in heaven? She responds, I tried, Randall, but that place is just as hard to get into as UCLA. <laughs> now, now, for a moment, I'm disappointed. I'm devastated, actually. I wasn't prepared for an afterlife in eternal damnation. But then I look up and I see all these beautiful people and animal in front of me. And just past that sinking feeling of devastation, I find a seed of inspiration, of hope for a better tomorrow. So I roll up my sleeves and I offer this. Why don't we all band together and every day put in the work to turn this hell into a heaven? To which Mother Teresa will smile and respond, Fuck yeah. <laughs> UCLA's graduating class of 2023, I want you all to go out there and do the same. Thank you. Thank you, Randall. Now it is my honor to present the candidates for the conferral of their degrees. I will call on the deans of the college to present the bachelor's candidates to Chancellor Block. Presenting the candidates for the bachelor's degrees in the Division of Physical Sciences is Dean Miguel Garcia Garibay. Thank you, Adriana. Will the candidates for the degrees of Bachelors of Science and Bachelor of Arts in the Division of Physical Sciences please raise if you're able and remain standing. You have learned about the great challenges of our time deep questions about the nature of our universe, about our origins, above all, about our future in the world in which we live. For instance, climate change lies in the domain of our students in atmospheric and oceanic sciences, earth planetary and space sciences, and the Institute of the Environment and Sustainability. The discovery of compounds that cure diseases and that lead to the sustainable generation of energy will be the world of our graduates in chemistry and biochemistry. The investigation into the structure and deep history of the universe, as well as the possibility of other life in the cosmos, will be pioneered by our physics and astronomy graduates. Our graduates in mathematics, statistics and data science, and data theory will pioneer the mastery of the flood of data that we must now process in order to understand and manage an ever more complex world. Did I mention <laughs> that graduates in, in physical sciences can be very loud? And not very many, but they're very loud. And they like to scream really loud when they want to celebrate their major. So, 
Let's take a listen. We celebrate physical sciences because all the science and technology that helps us explore the universe, sustain our planet, create new technologies, and improve our lives will be addressed by our graduates of atmospheric and oceanic science. <laughs> I told you, they're not very many, but they're really loud. Earth, planetary, and space sciences. <laughs> Statistics and data science. All right. Environmental science. How about physics and astronomy? All right. I believe that the loudest ones are mathematics. And how about chemistry and biochemistry? Good job. Physical sciences graduates, you all live here with a deep fund of knowledge in the science underlying what we know about our world. You also carry with you finely honed skills in reasoning and analysis that will equip you to overcome the most daunting intellectual challenges that will be thrown your way. You are the cream of the crop. You have mastered the hard sciences. Chancellor Block, it is my honor to present to you the dedicated, inquisitive, analytical, gifted, and altogether stellar candidates for the degrees of Bachelors of Science and Bachelor of Arts from the Division of Physical Sciences. Thank you, Miguel. Candidates, please be seated. Presenting the candidates for the bachelor's degree in the Division of Humanities is Dean Alexandra Minna Stern. Thank you, Adri Adriana. Will the candidates for the Bachelor of Arts degree in the Division of Humanities please stand if you are able? Congratulations, and I know you can make a lot of noise, too. <laughs> when I look out at you and I see you, I reflect that the greatest public research university in the land educates experts and seekers of knowledge of many kinds, and that among these, since UCLA's founding over a century ago, there have always been experts in humankind the young people who felt called to study the human legacy itself, the thought and the languages and the literatures and arts that define our personal and social lives and our long intersecting cultural histories. Indeed, universities have since their earliest beginnings over a millennium ago made a place for the fundamental consideration of human value, human meaning and human improvement. And it was from this seed of inquiry that the university grew and continues to grow to this day, even as we have faced renewed challenges and opportunities. Humanities graduates, what have you learned and what will you take with you from UCLA to teach others? You are graduates in philosophy and exacting caretakers of the truth. You are linguists. Scholars of languages itself as a human faculty and medium of communication. You are art historians, keen observers of the image and its uses. You are scholars of religion and of how humans' deepest beliefs about the world shape their lives. Many of you are learners of difficult languages and sharp and independent-minded readers of the literatures of the world, literatures in English, in Asian languages and cultures, in Near Eastern languages and cultures, in comparative literature, in classics, in Spanish and Portuguese, in Slavic, East European, and Eurasian languages and cultures, and in European languages and transcultural studies. And many of you here have completed minors in the humanities, in digital humanities, in the study of religion, and in LGBTQ studies. 
I hope that you've completed the coursework for your degrees with joy and learning and with a real drive to understand all that is human. But I know you're also aware of the very practical, very considerable powers that you have acquired. You are highly trained writers and speakers. You are readers and translators and interpreters of complex human situations. You are living encyclopedias of culture and spokespeople for the commitments held most clear, most clear and dear by human beings. And I know also you are critics, creators, free thinkers, fighters for justice, and continual self-learners. And these, it's very important to remember, are powers and skills that any workplace needs. They're also uh, very clearly the powers that the world needs today. Chancellor Block, I present to you the eloquent, cultured, thoughtful, resourceful, passionately humane candidates for the degree of Bachelor in Arts from the Division of Humanities. Thank you, Alex. Candidates, please be seated. Presenting the candidates for the bachelor's degrees in the Division of Life Sciences is Dean Tracy Johnson. Thank you, Adriana. Will the candidates for the degrees of Bachelors of Science and Bachelors of Arts in the Division of Life Sciences please rise if you're able and remain standing. Oh my God. All right. So I would like to start by congratulating you all for all you've accomplished over these four extraordinary years. While this time has brought some challenges to all of us, there have also been opportunities and extraordinary moments of triumph. To this end, it is important for us to take stock of what the disciplines within the life sciences, what we have ex which we have explored and you have embraced, have accomplished in this extraordinary time. Accomplishments like research in psychology that has helped us understand and, yes, ameliorate psychological stress. Advances in computational and systems biology that have allowed us to see the sequence of a virus in single nucleotide resolution so we can understand its biology. And because of fundamental studies in immunology and molecular biology, we were poised to develop and distribute in record time life-saving treatments and protective vaccines. Advances in molecular genetics have made it possible for the first time to develop gene therapy to treat sickle cell anemia and other devastating ailments. Yes, in the short time that you have been students here at UCLA, disciplines in the life sciences have quite literally been at the center of addressing the most fundamental challenges of a generation. But frankly, this isn't new. Life sciences disciplines have long been at the forefront of addressing the most fundamental and existential questions of our time. Questions like, what is the impact of human activity on the planet? What do we need to do to mitigate the negative effects? How do we prevent and cure life-threatening diseases? What is consciousness? How do we think? How do we love? How do we learn? And how does that three-pound organ inside of our skull affect all of this? At UCLA, to address these exciting biological questions, we offer dozens of majors in life sciences. And in fact, the life sciences is the home of the largest number of undergraduates at UCLA. So I know, I know we can make some noise. Are you ready? Are you ready? All right, life sciences, bring it. Disciplines including computational and systems biology, ecology, behavior, and evolution, marine biology, human biology and society, cognitive science, microbiology, immunology, and molecular genetics, molecular cell and developmental biology, physiology, 
neuroscience, psychobiology, biology, and psychology. As UCLA, as UCLA has just marked its first 100 years, you are graduating Bruins. You will lead us into the next 100 years as our future leaders, doctors, teachers, researchers, scientists, therapists, entrepreneurs, and global citizens. So Chancellor Block, it is my honor to present to you the psychologically well-adjusted, neurologically well-connected, ecologically sensitive, evolutionarily complex, immunologically flexible, molecularly elegant, physiologically well-integrated, computationally sophisticated, and absolutely amazing, extraordinary candidates for the degrees in the Bachelor's of Science and Bachelor's of Arts in the Division of Life Sciences. Thank you, Tracy. Candidates, please be seated. Presenting the candidates for the bachelor's degrees in the Division of Social Sciences is Dean Abel Valenzuela. Thank you, Adriana. Will the candidates for the degrees of Bachelor of Science and Bachelor of Arts in the Division of Social Sciences please rise, if you are able, and remain standing. You have earned this moment through hard work, long hours, and through the perseverance that you have shown. Each of you should be incredibly proud of what you have accomplished. Our motto in the social sciences is engaging Los Angeles, changing the world. And you are now positioned and expected to take what you have learned and to make your mark on the world. As social scientists, you will have the opportunity to have a seat at the table to help achieve the positive changes that you want to see in the world. As social scientists, you will address economic, political, and social conditions in order to create more equity and opportunity in our public and private institutions. As social scientists, you will examine the roots of social and cultural conflicts to move us towards a more just and humane society. As social scientists, you will communicate across cultures and communities, forging enduring partnerships with people different from yourselves, whether from different neighborhoods, different cities, different states, or different nations. As social scientists from UCLA, you have learned from the faculty in departments that are among the best in the world, and you will be active agents for change in the construction of a better society. Now bear with me, because we have the largest number of departments in the social sciences, including those in geography, aerospace, military science, and naval science. Native American Studies, Communication, Labor Studies, Anthropology, the department that brought us Randall Park, Asian American Studies, Gender Studies, Chicana, Chicano, and Central American Studies, History, Sociology, African American Studies, Political Science, and Economics. You, you have learned to look at the world through a new lens of understanding. You have the research skills, the cultural insights, and the community-oriented perspective to change the world. Today, we celebrate your achievements and the promise of a future that benefits from your leadership. You have reached this moment not despite the challenges you have faced, 
but because you face those challenges with dedication, thoughtfulness, and hard work. Chancellor Block, I am honored to present to you the most socially engaged, research savvy, service oriented, culturally creative, interactionally skillful, intersubjectively attuned, around the clock inspired and inspiring, multilingual, multicultural, and multi everything you could ever think of, plus more the candidates for the degree of Bachelor of Science and Bachelor of Arts from the great, unique, awesome, breathtaking, tremendous, and splendid, impressive, and superb UCLA Division of Social Sciences. Congratulations, class of 2023. Thank you, Abel. Candidates, please be seated. The candidates for the bachelor's degrees have now been presented. I call on Chancellor Block to confer the degrees of Bachelor of Science and Bachelor of Arts on the class of 2023. Will all the candidates for the degree of Bachelor of Science and Bachelor of Arts please stand and remain standing if you're able to do so. Candidates for the bachelor's degree, your presence here today demonstrates the rich reward of intelligence and perseverance. The UCLA community takes great pride in celebrating the achievements of the class of 2023. More than anything, I hope that your experience at UCLA has opened up some windows on the world for you and leaves you yearning to know more. Your undergraduate experience is just the beginning of a life of continuing discovery and the skills you've acquired here in and outside the classroom will serve you well in our rapidly changing world. Now I have to say the words that actually I guess, confers your degree, and this I have to be very careful that these words are correct. If I make a mistake, you're back here next year. But there's a problem, there's no space for you, right? A lot of applications for next year, so sorry about that, so I'll be careful, right? Now, by virtue of the authority vested in me, by the regents, of the University of California, I hereby confer upon you the degree of Bachelor of Arts or Bachelor of Science. Congratulations. Graduates, let me congratulate all of us on becoming the newest alumni of UCLA as the class of 2023. Now we have one final tradition to observe. Before we received our degrees, we wore our tassels on the right side of our mortar boards. Now that our degree has been conferred, it is time to move the tassel to the left and join the select company of UCLA graduates. Bachelors, turn your tassels! Close commencement, please join in the singing of the alma mater, Hail to the Hills of Westwood, performed by Mila Moretti, Madison Chamberlain, Kevin Corrigan, and Leland Smith from the Herb Alpert School of Music. Hail to the hills of Westwood, to the mighty sea below. Hail to our
Thank you, Mila, Madison, Kevin, and Leland. And to all of you, thank you very much for joining us tonight. Best wishes to the class of 2023, and go Bruins. Thank you, graduates and guests. Please check around you to ensure you don't leave anything behind. Then please exit Poly Pavilion and reunite with your graduates outside. Thank you and congratulations. <laughs>